So now we're going to show you the essence of doing subsurface testing with eddy currents in uh, non-ferrous, that's non-magnetic materials such as aluminiums or stainless steels and titanium. Uh, I plug the probe in, this has got a reflection lead. The probe we're using is a uh, PUS 16, no, sorry, PER 16, so right angled, spot face, low frequency probe, frequency range from 300 hertz to 100 kilohertz. Um, as with most things in life, including cooking, uh, use something that somebody's prepared earlier is actually probably easier. So if we go to load and save, uh, there's a setting in here for a per 16, but it's just a spot face. You could equally well have used a setting for another pro. Uh, go over here, recall, load the settings. Um, so, oops, press balance. Okay, so the liftoff's probably not exactly as one would like it. We could just again use the setting we used earlier. And what's this test block that you're using? Okay, well, yeah, that's a good question. Very good question. Glad you asked that, Kate. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the test piece we have here has a series of flat bottomed holes on the back face. Uh, they're 25, sorry, 20, 40, 60, and 80 percent deep. 20, 40, 60, and 80 percent deep. Uh, so there on the back face, um, turn that over, I set the lift off horizontal, and now what happens is these are the responses. Now, what, what we see is a small phase shift happening, and because I've got a full store on, that's not good. So let's take the persistence down to. Current persistence was off, so let's put that in here. Oops. Got to make it half a second. Erase the screen. Long press on the erase button, erases the screen. Okay, so this is the small response. This is from the, well, in fact, the 20% deep notch on the back. Uh, you can see there's a small phase shift as we go across. Uh, the effect of changing the frequency would be. If we go higher, we'll push the defects over and really effectively make it less sensitive to the deeper defects. We can have a go at that. I'm not quite sure what frequency we're using on that. We're using 10. So let's change that to 5 kilohertz. So we've halved the frequency. Press the balance. First thing that we'll see is that the lift off has changed. So is the auto lift off option. Oh, I need to get out of that. Okay. And so we've made the frequency lower. I mean we can of course put a bit more gain in, so quickly go to the quick menu. In fact, to be honest, I think uh, I might go and put the gains equal because it's kind of a 7 dB apart. Oh, so if we go, fix what I did, that's again. Oops, sorry. Now, if I go and change this. balance. Lift off will be unchanged. This is our small response. You'll see actually it goes down. As if you're dead over the center you'll see there's a dip in the middle because there's edge of the coil doing and that's that's at five kilohertz. Now that's on the back face there. Now one of the things about this of course is you can take coating. Uh, press balance Lift off still good. We can still detect the defects to the thing, even the small one. It's still there. So this is just a plain plate, and these are our 
20, 40, 60, and 80. So that bottom holes, that's the 20. Uh, if I then put another plate beneath it with a notch in it, you might be able to see that. And then balance point changes because there's now more metal beneath the probe. This is the response from a that's that notch we can see in the plate. Um, but if I then go and put in a layer. balance again, notch is still doing response in the plate. I could uh, lower the frequency further and let's try two kilohertz. Balance. Uh, it's also the strange little bit of ellipsal control. Press balance. And now we've got the, that's a nicer position to be, that's the defect in the second layer beneath the coating, between the air gap, if you like, um, going vertically. Obviously could change to the gain down. And then this is our 0.2 millimeter, so 20%. Uh, that bottom hole. 